Christopher Guest is here. He started as an actor in the 1960s. He then became a comedy writer on the National Lampoon's radio show. He also made records. He has achieved cult status for his work in many movies, including This Is Spinal Tap, Waiting for Guffman, and Best in Show. His latest film is A Mighty Win, which he directed, he co-wrote, and he stars in it. He plays a member of a folk music group reunited to play a benefit concert, and here is a scene from the film. Yeah. And they had no, uh, they had no hole in the center of the record, so a lot no, of the, you'd have to provide the, it the people uh, complain that you'd get this vinyl, of course, in those days, and you'd kind of up to you to kind of center it and make mm -hmm. the actual. It would teeter crazily on the little yeah. spindle and the you... hole, and that was a whole. Well, of course, we had no control nightmare, over that nightmare. aspect yeah. of it, but uh, but they were still good records. They were oh, good, they were good, good product. Yeah. And if you punched Just a hole in them, right. you'd have a good time. Yeah. Joining me now is Christopher Guest. I am pleased to have him here for the very first time. Welcome. Thank you very much. My, here's my suspicion. Sure. This is why I'm suspicious about you. Okay. A guy who does what you do, which who has is, yeah. the quality to be funny, write right. funny, act funny. Right. Lives a pretty normal life. You're a pretty regular guy. Yes. You know, which I, shows you my sort of notion that somehow is, is as crazy as you are on film. Right. Is the kind of movies you do would somehow be a bit more e eccentric. Well, okay. I I, uh, I think you're right. I and, and and that's why probably I don't do these things because I think people may expect something else. Maybe they expect yeah. someone that's uh, that tells more jokes or that uh, does some strange things. But I I uh, which I'll do a little later in a couple of minutes. But well, okay. But, Tell some jokes or no? No, I don't know any jokes. You don't? No, uh, jokes yes, I, or not? I don't tell jokes. I don't know any jokes. I, that's not what I do. You don't ask people for jokes. You're not. You're uh, not no. You ever heard anything funny? You haven't heard any jokes. You wouldn't. Oh, do I've that. heard jokes, but not in the last ten years, maybe. <laughs> Why do you make the kind of movies you make? Well, it occurred to me after we did. Uh, I participated in this movie called This Is Spinal Tap right. a while ago. That Rob Reiner directed, right? And Harry Shearer, and Michael McKean, and I uh, wrote the music for that, and we had a lot of fun uh, doing it. It occurred to me that maybe that's a funny way to work. Uh, I should explain. It's an improvised. That was an improvised right. film. There's no right. dialogue written at all. Not not a word. In any film you've made? No. Well, not in any film. I directed a movie called The Big Picture. Right. That's right. With but, Kevin Bacon. But, but there is. An outline, and then people an outline. know who their character is. Very much so. Uh, Eugene Levy and I uh, work on the story for four or five months. Each character's backstory is written, the, their history. It's quite dense, and then I break this down into cards, 141 cards, which uh, describes every scene, uh, beginning, middle, and end, first act, second act, third act. So everyone has a very good idea of what to do. Uh, there's no rehearsal. Uh, I would equate it to uh, jazz mus musicians playing, uh, knowing what the song is, knowing what key you're playing in, and then listening to see whether it's time to solo or not. Yeah. Being able to improvise. Improvise, yeah. The scene we just saw. Yes. The characters knew what the purpose of being there was. Yes. They knew who they were. Yes. And from that would come whatever hit their head. Yes. Whatever somebody else said made them want to say what? Yes gives them authenticity? It, there's a spontaneity that comes from this kind of work that you don't find in a conventional movie because the things being said are being said for the first time. And uh, it's a different way of working. I find it exciting, and I think other actors find it exciting because you're there in the moment. When you work on a conventional film and you've worked on, you've rehearsed, you know what the next line is going to be, you are acting in a different way. This is more reacting to something that's happening legitimately for the first time. It's, it's a challenge. You go back to the same actors frequently. I have to. It's a tax thing. <laughs> the tax thing? No. You get I, a tax deduction if you use the same actors? I do this because... This is a new part of the federal code which says... You know, I same actors twice. Th these actors, the actors, actors in the movie. film, and I, you know, I, I'll miss someone if I yeah. start naming people, but are extremely gifted at this I don't know what you would call it. At what the, do you call the, it? I call it a, I, I, I call it, um, a task. I, I, I don't know what to call yeah. it. Um, I tell you what you don't call it. What don't I call it? You don't call it a mockumentary. No, I don't. I don't call it a mockumentary because I don't 
enjoy the term, the mock part of the mentory yeah. description. Because it's not mocking? I don't think so. What so, do you think it is? Um, I think it's done in a documentary form, which allows us to work in this way, yeah. but it's not, that's a, just a cheap way of, um, I think it saves time for people who want to describe something and think it's funny, but it's not. So I don't use that. It shows us people that we are like doing what might be considered s silly things. I'm thinking now best in show. Right. But we like them because they are serious about it and they are they're themselves. Am I yes. right or wrong? Yes, but it, it, it's, it may be silly to you, yeah. but to three million people who have dogs or 10, 20 million, thousand million people have dogs, it's not silly at all. It's very important. It's the most important thing. <laughs> the most important yeah. thing. Now, all of us have hobbies or, you know, that may seem strange to someone else. People collect thimbles. I know. And I know. that's not what I do, but yeah. that's someone's world, and they may go to a convention where there are thimble collections, and that's their model trains. So there's, there's, there's a big world out there that's, that's hidden in many cases. Sure. And I think it's very interesting to, to, to go into those worlds. Is that why you made this movie? You wanted to go into the world of folk music? Well, I, I wanted to make music uh, again in a film. And it really started with that before I had even considered the kind of music. I actually had played folk music in the 60s. I'm actually one of those people who remember that. Do you still play folk, folk music? Apparently. Well, I'm not, I don't mean just in this movie, uh, but do the yes, folksmen get I, together? The, the folksmen don't get together uh, outside of this movie other than to perform for... Uh, and we've opened for Spinal Tap. We've right. opened for ourselves on occasion. Right. Uh, we actually once got booed off so people could actually see us in different <laughs> outfits, which yes. was a very surreal yes. moment. Yes. Um, but I, I, I think, I, yes, I play f folk music, but it's not the kind of folk music that's represented in this movie. I play bluegrass. I play yeah. w maybe perhaps more legitimate music then. But you were onto the idea of why you wanted to make this music, this movie, and this music. It, it, it really came from wanting to play music. I, re I realized that I could, I, I knew something about this kind of music. I realized that the cast are extremely musical people, uh, without exception, either, either singers or really good players. And that afforded me the, the luxury of, of building this st story where we all had to play music. And the music is done live in the film. The, the, the whole concert is live which doesn't happen very often in, in films. As I said, they come together for a benefit concert after right. sort of looking back. What do you like best about this whole process of, from start to finish of making a movie, a Christopher Guest movie? Well, I enjoy many aspects. I, I love writing with Eugene. Mm. The making of it is oddly the the most distracting because if I'm directing and acting, it just it goes by very quickly because I have a lot of grown-up work to do. I have to do many things at the You're same time. You're in charge. Time. Yeah. Um, I love the editing. Uh, Robert Layton is the editor I work with, and it takes us close to nine months to edit these films. But we you like that. You love, I love the idea that. of I think that's, pouring over those. I, I love that. Yeah, so. I love that. I find it very exciting. Would you consider some other form now, even though you have in the past? I mean, or are you now sort of this somehow you found your stroke? Well, I don't know the answer to that. I would say I wouldn't say that this is all that I'm going to do. I would say it really depended on the material or the idea that I had. And if something was served better to be done in a different way, then, then I would look at that. For the moment, this seems highly enjoyable. And it fits. It seems to fit. All right. Roll tape. This is the first scene. Uh, this is where Bob Balaban, who plays Jonathan Steinblum, he explains this tribute to his father. Here it is. All from so very high. She was very protective. You could say she was overly protective. I just like to think she, she cared about me, well, of which she did a lot. And I was a member of the chess team. And whenever we would have chess tournaments, I had to wear a protective helmet. I had to wear a football helmet. Now, who knows what she was thinking? Maybe she thought that we might have fallen, maybe, and impaled our heads on a, on a pointy bishop or something. I, I don't know. Just one take, two takes, three takes? I would say, I can't remember specifically no, I mean, the scene, specific, but I would but say that three would be average, and sometimes it's one. And never the same words. Rarely the same words. Yeah. 
uh, rarely the same words, which makes editing interesting. Is narrative a problem at all? No. No, no. This is, in some ways, this has to be uh, more strictly adhered to than ever. Because if you don't have at your disposal as an actor every single detail of what happens in a scene and your, your backstory and the other person's, you can't begin to, to work. And you can't, it's not just people yapping, you know, coming yeah. in and oh, just right, saying right, whatever right, you right. want. This is, it's very difficult to articulate what this, what this is. Because people, I, I get a lot of, uh, I'm trying, <laughs> I get a lot of uh, <laughs> blank looks, and I'm getting one right now. But <laughs> No, you're not. No, I'm just, no, I just wanted, to, no, no, you're not getting a blank look. I want your best, though. I want to hear you explain this better than you ever have. Really? Yes. Wow, you should have gotten me this morning. <laughs> um, let's see. I didn't mean to interrupt. Yes, I no, I've used this analogy about music, but then it occurred to me, of course, if you're not a musician, then, you, then you're even more in the hole, because you say, well, how do people stand up and play a saxophone? There's no music they're reading. Where does their mind go to, you know, how are they inhabited by some muse that moves them to play yeah. a C instead of an A, and, and the, now you're back to where you started from. Now the, you know. Um, but I can only say this is something that you are kind of born knowing how to do just you really believe that absolutely I, I've done this for a long time now and I when I meet actors I don't there's no nothing to read there's nothing to audition I talk with them and I can get a sense whether if, they have it whether they they have okay it. Very well, so what are you looking for um, I am looking for <laughs> intelligence and, yes. and someone well, that's can, easy to spot in 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 list and someone who can listen and who, who uh, has a, some kind of a spark. And again, it's not only hard to explain the actual premise and, uh, of what this is, but then it's even harder to explain, well, how do you know what that is? Yeah. But, I, and not to be glib about this, but you know, some people can, there are people who can run fast, there are people who can jump high, and to them, it's, well, I can run fast, sure. I can jump high. Well, I can stand with these people in front of an audience or it happens to be on film, and we can talk forever, basically. And then I get that look. No, no, why do you no, say no, no, that? No, 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 because it's a cheap joke. No, <laughs> it is I, a cheap joke. I, I, no, <laughs> uh, honestly, it's, it kind of goes around in a circle. Then it, yeah. it, it ultimately lands in my lap in the sense that I can't fully explain this. I apologize. But it is something I truly believe. You, you were born with this. Yeah. I think you can get better at it, but it's not something that, that can be taught. Yeah, it's an X factor you have or don't. It is. And people go to improv classes, but they're essentially learning it as an exercise yeah. to help in acting, which can help because it's a, it loosens you up potentially. But y you can do this or you can't. And um, it also it should be pointed out by me, because I'm speaking, I guess, that uh, as opposed to what you see in a club where you go to see improv in a club, they're, they're heading for a joke, basically, and, and it, the energy's a little mm -hmm. more unreal. And that this is, is separate because it's m more real-time uh, behavior, perhaps, in the sense of it's more realistic as, as far as energy goes. Right. The uh, putting it together, do you... How, do, the actual shooting of this, do you shoot... Explain that to me. It's very different than a conventional movie. Exactly. I, the scenes that I'm, that I'm not in, I have a little microphone, and I speak, in this case, this was shot by Arlene Donnelly, a woman from New York, a very talented uh, camera woman. It's all handheld. Uh, and I tell her, as it's happening, where to go. I say, in a whisper, go to Eugene, move into Eugene, as, as you would on television, yeah. uh, live television, right, exactly. come back out to a, a two shot. And therefore, because I can sense how the scene is developing, I know wh what's going to kind of happen. Um, when I'm in a scene, then some the bets are kind of off, which is why I think I'm less and less in the movies that I'm doing. I think I appear less than I used to. There are, it is said that in some scenes you can see the camera shaking because the camera person is laughing. Uh, that happens. That has happened, yes. That has mm. happened, um, yes. And, and we've cracked each other up on occasion. Uh, You've used Fred Willard. I've used Fred Willard uh, to the best of my knowledge. Yes, one of the strangest people ever, one of the funniest people ever, truly from another place. Yeah. <laughs> you resisted planet, but... No, because it's not a planet. He, he, you know, he's technically a human. But 
uh, nobody knows where this comes from. And he's the one actor that I've worked with where we, we roll out entire mags. This is not cut. This is, we all kind of run the 10 minutes on these 16 millimeter cameras and Fred will be the one to say, I'm not finished. And everyone kind of looks around. No, we realize you're not finished, but we actually have to move on. We to have to another, go to another scene. There's actually another scene in the movie that you're <laughs> not in. And thank you very much, but we um, have what we want. Right. Um, the other thing that's unusual is that we shoot this, the, these movies in 24, 25 days. And a, and a conventional movie could be 60, 80 days. And uh, it's different. What's the budget for a movie like you make? Well, it depends. Uh, no, it doesn't. The budget is, um, the, on this one, it was about $9 million which is so far under the radar of a, of a typical movie that uh, you couldn't even have anyone understand it that worked at a studio. They would just it's, it's a number they'd they would, say, no, that's, it's, it's that's a number they're not familiar with. They're not familiar with it, except if it's the party after the movie. <laughs> that's yeah. how it's familiar. No, we understand. That, that's the, with the shrimp and the, the tent, exactly. right, where the people show up. We're with talking the, about $9 million to make the whole movie. That pays for the cameras, that pays for the location, that yes. pays for the actors. Correct. And the actors all got the same amount of money, including me. And we all share, and it's, it's, it's a favored nations uh, thing because it's my group. And I say, well, let's all do this and let's all so share. Everybody knows that you, you, you Absolutely. And we, we share in a, in a participation of this as well. Is there no jealousy among the actors? I don't think so. No, I, th I think if you had jealousy, um, you couldn't make a movie like this. Because this is not a movie where someone is in their trailer waiting to come out because their scene is being shot and, you know, time, time to come out. And this is, we watch each other work. I think these people really enjoy, uh, they're fans So when of, Fred's doing his scene, people are oh, standing well, around watching. Is, everyone is watching Fred work, without exception. Everyone, you know, it, it's like kids at a party. I mean, and this is fun. This is uh, fun to do. This is... Uh, when did you meet Fred Willard? 30, over 30 years ago, Fred and I were in a play at the... Uh, Circle in the Square Theater called Little Murders. And I, it was the first play I ever did. It was Jules Pfeiffer play that Alan Arkin yeah. directed. I knew something was off <laughs> when Fred actually started doing lines that weren't in the play <laughs> to me. And I was... Just to throw you off? I, you'd have to ask him. I, I was 19, I think. <laughs> yes, and you said. Uh, no, I was 20. And I was sitting on the stage. This is the play going on. There are people there. And I heard these words that weren't familiar. And I looked over and there was Fred, of course. He's in the play. But <laughs> I didn't really know what to make of it other than I just looked at him and uh, said, you're different. Nodded. And I said to myself, you're different. And, uh, <laughs> and he, is. he is. Roll tape is Fred Willard. Oh, so I thought if you could do that, we'd have someone on stage drench the whole group with water. And um, you could look at the camera and say, hey, what happened? And every time, another thing of water, and by then you're all soaked, even the ladies. And at the end of the song, you turn the guitars and all upside down and water splashes out, kerplunk. <laughs> it's just a thought. Just tell me that, that scene. Well, all that's set up is they're rehearsing. Obviously, we, they know the song. Right. And I said to Fred, uh, this is, you interrupt them. Period. Period. You yeah. interrupt them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that explains Maybe you have right an there. idea. You know who something. you are. Oh, yeah. You know oh. who they are. Oh, oh no, yeah. I'm saying Fred does. Yes. Fred knows who he is. Oh, he absolutely. knows who they are. Absolutely. He knows the moment in the film. He, he knows, knows his, he knows the dynamic as, as the manager of this group. Yeah. Go over and, you know, interrupt this rehearsal. And if you know yourself, you know your character, you will know what he might say. End of story. You, you, you Fred Willard. Uh, maybe. Yeah, yeah. And there, there, there it is. Yeah, there it is. Uh, that may have been one or two takes. I, I, I don't know. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Next scene. This is uh, Bob Balaban talking about the staging of the concert with the director, who is Michael Hitchcock. I just want to get these scenes in because it's so funny. Roll tape. Here it is object that represents the thing that it actually is, can that be next to something that it's pretending to be? Yes, it's Would perfectly okay? fine. You know, I really don't have time to explain Stagecraft 101. This show starts in an hour. Now, every, everything is exactly and the way the, you... What's that, that, that? Those are lights hanging up there? Yes, those are lights. Could they fall? And that's a ceiling above us. But they look shaky. No, they're not shaky. They're it's perfect. It's like that wire. I see a wire. I see it. Oh! That scene. Yes. Oh! Yeah. 
he just whacked him. He just yeah. uh, you know, didn't expect one, yeah. one take. One uh, take. The the crew literally fell over, and there's a laugh almost on top of that. We had to cut it. There was barely room to make the cut because yeah. of the uh, the ouch, and then it, it just was so shocking to people. And this is I should point out that, that that has built this relationship has built to the point where Mike Hitchcock has to has to do that. Somebody please do that, and he, he's he's done it. Let me go back to uh, Saturday Night Live for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Saturday Night Live gives that reaction to you? Well, it was the water. It was the, no, uh, it's good water. Was that a good experience for you, truthfully? Um, basketball, you said? Do no, I, enjoy I said basketball? Saturday Night Live. Ah, Saturday Night Live. Well, I did it for one year. Oh, come no, on. I'm, don't, no, seriously. Don't. No, I'm telling you, Billy Crystal, Martin Short, right. and I signed one-year contracts. Right. We did it for one year, right. and at the end of one year, we left. Because? Because we had one year contract. Okay. Oh, is that the only reason? You could have, did you say, gee, I love this so much, I'd like another contract? We said, I love this so much, we signed a one year contract. <laughs> uh, you know, it, honestly, um, honestly. We, we came to that at a um, stage in our careers. Normally, it's much younger people would go to the show and we had been somewhat established. We'd already done Spinal right. Tap and yeah. Billy had done his thing. So we did whatever we wanted to do. It just wasn't the kind of thing, I guess, um, that I wanted to do. I just met my wife-to-be. Yeah. We were about to get married, and I was a bit distracted, I have to say. Very distracted. So Jamie Lee Curtis had you all confuddled. She had me distracted in a big way. <laughs> it's to understandable. Yes, to the extent that I thought this was taking a... Uh, the show was just sort of a... I have to go and You'd rather be back with Jamie Lee. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So that was an odd uh, thing. Yeah. Billy Crystal could do this or not? Billy's a wonderful improviser. He could do this? Absolutely. He's done it. He's, no, I know, he's but he's this. not in this one, is he? N no, but he's a big star. You can't put a huge movie star in this movie because people would say, why is Billy Crystal uh, you know, repairing shoes in that little store? I think there comes a point... Uh, where it's not an accident that they're not famous people in here. P fam you know, famous actors have said, I'd love to do this. And, uh, Fred Willard's a famous actor. Mm, not in the same I way. Know, you know, 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 seriously. Uh, it's, it's a, there's a, you know, Billy is, is really, actually, uh, for movie stars, uh, he's, mm, he's one of the only ones that could do that, the work, uh, you know. But he's, he's, he's too big. So it's, uh, same with Martin Short. Martin's, Martin's wonderful big, at yeah. this kind. Too big. Yeah, I think so. Well, I mean, they'll probably say, what do you mean? But <laughs> Wait, they see this. How come you didn't call me, Chris? I'm well, too no, big. I, these are friends of mine, so it's yeah. not just... Uh... When you make these, yes. do you take advice from your actors? Advice? Do you consult with them about what you, the movie you're making? No. I thought you were going to say that. I knew no, you because, were going to say that. No. I knew it. Did you? Yes, I knew it. Really? Just, I can know, know enough about you already to really? know that. Yeah. Well, here's the thing, though. I mean, you're it's, not a man who doesn't know himself. I can tell you that. Here's the thing. Uh, Gene and I, once we've written this, okay. this story, the actors have tremendous leeway now. Yeah. Once their characters are, are outlined, essentially, in, in their history, I say to the actors, you get to pick the clothes you're wearing. You get to, to you know, if you want to bring something on the set, they obviously write their parts in the sense that they're doing it on camera. Sure, right. But they can't say, can my character have been born in New Delhi and have a rash on their... No, no, because <laughs> now we're, you know... But they have a tremendous amount <laughs> what of What would you say if they said that? Well, in that case, I'd say yes. But that was a bad example. <laughs> that was a good example. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You would say that. I mean, being born in Delhi and having, would, then that, having yeah, again, a rash, that, I would have that said, would yeah. get you in there immediately. That would get that you That would in be there. a flash of brilliance. Yes. Wouldn't it? Well, it would add to it. It would give it a kind of multilateral feeling. Yeah. Yeah. And that's good. You know, and it would... Yeah. Hmm. I'm going to take a look at a scene from Spinal Tap. Wow. Here it is. Uh-oh, this is... Up. Yeah. All the way up. You're on 10 on your guitar. Where can you go from there? Where? I don't know. Nowhere. Exactly. What we do is if we need that extra push over the cliff. You know what we do? Put it up to 11. 11, exactly. One louder. Why don't you just make 10 louder and make 10 be the top number and make that a little louder? These go to 11. 
And so here's what you said to me. When you knew it was this scene, you said, this scene has legs. Well, it seems to have taken on, so this was done 20 years ago, it seems to have taken on the 11 thing, or whatever, you, how you want to describe it, comes up quite a bit. It, people, if people do recognize me, they say, oh, does your car go to 11? And, you know, does oh, yeah. thing? So that 11 thing, uh, people actually started making amplifiers that went to 11, <laughs> went to 11 and, because of this. and guitar knobs and things like that. So it's, it, it's nice that the film has, had, uh, uh, has stayed, has some staying power, I think. Uh, How about waiting for Guffman? Didn't do as well as the others? No, it was a very small release. It was in very few theaters. It may have been in 50 theaters. It was as good as the others? I don't know. I wouldn't be able to say that. Well, you, there are a lot you wouldn't of be able who, to say with it? I mean, you, you no. must know. No, 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 no. We don't have I, any I, opinion as to whether Waiting for Guffman was as good as Spinal Tap, as good as Best in Show, I, I, as good as wow, this A Mighty like Wind. A McCarthy thing. Um, <laughs> yes. No, I... I um, were I like you or were you not? Yeah, exactly. I, uh, <laughs> do have, you know have, or do have you, have you not have decency. any friends? Have you no decency? I, I, um, I like the film. I do like the film. Yeah. I like the film. But that was the first film I made in this manner, and they, it wasn't in a lot of theaters. But subsequently, that film has done well in the DVD area, and it, it sort of feeds all of this stuff. I guess people may have gone back and looked at it. I tell you why, because you and your name on it. Roll tape, here it is. Thing me to do something I don't want to do. To leave, to, to go out and just leave and go home and say, make a clean cut here and say, no way, Corky, you're not putting up with these people. And I'll tell you why I can't put up with you people, because you're bastard people. That's what you are, you're just bastard people and I'm going home and I'm gonna I'm going to bite my pillow is what I'm going to do. Hmm. What are you thinking when you watch that? What am I thinking? Yes. I was thinking I'm going to have the grilled salmon. Tonight? Yes. And just a salad, something light-ish. I'm thinking I haven't seen that for quite a while. Yeah. And... Um, <laughs> It's odd, you know. But I don't. You were looking at it like you weren't thinking about salmon and yeah. I don't. Salad. I don't. You were looking uh, at it like wondering why I had done it. I I don't watch my movies. I don't sit at home and once I've done them, I don't see them ever. Well, if by accident, I mean if it's on a plane or something. But I don't. Well, you don't have to watch the movies on the plane. Well, it's right in front of you. You could put your head between your legs, you but then you read. Then you wouldn't need talcum powder. The thing is, <laughs> you. I don't go back and, you know, in the middle of the night and put on these movies and, well, I do that, but I don't have a clicker in my hand. I, I don't, uh, it, it makes me uncomfortable, actually. I like making the movies and there it is, but I don't... Uh, makes you uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know why. I, I just, it's, I, I did that, you know, that's kind of done and I'm glad if people enjoy it, but I don't, uh, I don't dwell on it. I okay, well, bear with me then. We've got one more scene. <laughs> You don't this have is, to watch it. You can put your head between your legs. Put your head down. You look See? the other way. Right. Exactly. Okay. You can read this piece of paper. Mm -hmm. uh, Best in show is the movie. One of my faves. Here it is. You know, I can't dance. I can't. I've got two left feet. i got two left feet. <laughs> I, I thought he was kidding. But I wasn't. Um, I, I was born uh, with two uh, left feet. And they had a, uh, a nickname uh, for me. They used to call me Loopy. Uh, because, you know, I would walk in little loops. Uh, kept going in circles. Wow. <laughs> well, what? That I enjoy watching. Yeah, because? <laughs> well, they're two of my favorite People. actors yeah. in, the, in the world. I mean, Catherine is, uh, you know, it's, uh, wow. It's just harder to watch yourself, I suppose. Life is good for you. Really? Yes. That's a question. It, it is, because um, it's a very rare thing to be given... Uh, it really goes back to being being given uh, the ability to do this uh, by a company, Castle Rock, which is a, a, a production company in, in Los Angeles, that have given me, that have trusted me to do these movies, where they have said, these, these are your movies, and you may... And uh, that is a gift that a lot of people don't get and I am it's unbelievable it doesn't happen in the business that we work in where someone says this you get to do this I'm not going to tell you how to do this so if it fails it's your thing yeah. and if it succeeds it's your your thing it's it's very unusual it's a kind of a Woody Allen thing in part 
it's a kind of a Woody Allen thing, yes. Yeah. I don't know what his exact well, situation Well, but I, you know, was, I know either, but, and, and it's changed, but obviously. Yes. He went from he, one he, studio he, to yes. another, but at the I same time, it is. They yes. know what he's going to do. He's going to go make his movie, then I can yeah. try to... And that is, it, it's highly unusual. It's highly unusual. And I am more than grateful. It's almost, it's a, it's a, it's a real gift. You know. Who are your heroes? I have different kinds of heroes. I have uh, Peter Sellers is my main hero um, as a kid. Uh, I got to meet him once in, in London. Well, I, was a, I was quite young. I had the, uh, yeah, I, I got to meet him and worked on a, a movie for BBC with him there. Um, he was the main guy, still is, I guess. Because? Well, in comedies, in, in, in films, um, you either have people that are not really in their roles or you have people that just aren't funny. And he was so deeply invested in these people uh, that even if the film itself wasn't good, I was just obsessed with this talent. incredible talent and ability to disappear into these, these people. I have musical heroes as well, and that's, well, because I've, I've been a musician my whole life as well. Wow, you know, I have Bill Monroe as a, a mandolin player, oh, sure, and Doc right. Watson right. Are, 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 are heroes of mine. And uh, it's good having heroes in different areas. Willie Mays was a hero. I grew up in New York City. And sure. Was, Number 24. Number 24. How about filmmakers? Um, I have, uh, I loved Woody Allen's movies when I, before I even made movies. He was, you know, the only person doing something that I could connect es with. Especially the early ones. Well, that's before, yes, because that's, I didn't make movies. I said, I thought, how can anyone, how can someone be making the actually funny movies? That yeah, was exactly. kind of a novelty at the time. And his, you know, his, his intelligence and his, uh, going way back to even his work as a, as a stand-up mm -hmm. is just incredibly funny to me. Um, and aside from that, my, the people I've admired have, have not been made comedy movies. Um, uh, they've, you know, Alt, uh, Altman has done some really interesting yeah, films, yeah. and Scorsese, uh, Bob Balaban, and, um, and, 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 and Coppola have, have made, you know, wonderful films. I like a lot of foreign films. As well. Ang Lee is a, is a, yeah. a hero, a current hero. Because? There's a, there's a magical quality in, in these films. There's an elegance and a grace to the filmmaking, which is very uh, refined, highly unusual. And I find it transporting, you know. Does your, suppose you went to the studio, Castle Rock. Yes. And said, look, I just made A Mighty Wind. It's doing well. We're all doing well. I want to go do something very different. I've been influenced by Ang Lee. He mm -hmm. makes a different kind of movie. Mm -hmm. I want to be graceful. I want to have a certain, be able to create a certain kind of film. You think they'd say? They would say, um, "Let me get back to you." <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I really say, don't know. Let's think about it. Yeah, I'm oh, could sure. No, that, they'd say that really sounds like a great idea for Ang Lee. Great idea for, for Ang Lee. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, we're going to see if he's available. Or not. Jamie Lee Curtis. Yes. Can she do this? Um, I don't know, but we, we made a, an unwritten pact. We've been married almost 20 years now that we would not... Work together. Work together because we thought that this was maybe maybe it's a better idea to actually have a private life and then go off and then come back. Uh, she's very funny. She's funny in other comedies that I don't do. I think that's one of her strengths. You know, uh, she's also too famous by by a long mm -hmm. shot. She has an interesting career now because she's writing these amazing books. She's yeah. also a very talented photographer and she's a mother. Uh, and she does a, commercials. Well, she used to, but no, she's she's, okay. she's a she's a she's a mother. You know, she we have a seven-year-old and a sixteen-year-old, and this is a big job. You know, and she's being a. That's mother. her primary. 
now it is with the with with doing the books, and she's just done a film, but that's a that's now taking more of a backseat. Great to have you here. It really is. Thank you.